Well, Christians have just celebrated the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, one of God's greatest miracles. But in just five or ten years, having a baby without a biological father may well be possible for any woman who wants it, thanks to genetic engineering and some stem cells. Now, this is the question. Should children be created without fathers? Arati Prasad, you've written this uh, fascinating book, um, Like a Virgin, how science is redesigning the rules of sex. So, would this be a good thing? Children have long been created without fathers. It's something that's already happening. I mean, there's a new um, breed or type of women who are called solo parents as opposed to... Uh, solo mothers as opposed to single mothers because these are women who are around the time of menopause who are in good financial circumstance who don't have partners but have lots of money and what they're doing is getting um, sperm donors egg donors if they run out of their own and um, I guess having what you could call a technological adoption so they're giving birth to a child um, without a father and I think it's really important to differentiate because a lot of assumptions are made about the negative consequences on children who are created in this way without fathers. But those, are, those negative assumptions are extrapolated from looking at single parents who were in a marriage, who there's been the trauma of divorce and the loss of income. But this, well, every, every, every child has a father. The, there's a um, um, Centre for Family Research in Cambridge and they're doing some very good empirical research mm. on all kinds of families now and looking at um, but this how idea, children actually yeah. suffer. So, But this idea of create every child has a father. Yeah. Creating a child, deliberately creating a child without a father, with, with two mothers, is, would that be beneficial? Is that a good thing for society? This is not something everyone's going to use. So a lot of these technologies that you're talking about, generating uh, eggs and sperm from stem cells, have been developed to help the infertile. These are women who have menopause very early in their 20s, young men and women who've had cancer chemotherapy and have their eggs and sperm destroyed. That's not to say <coughs> that once the technologies are available, other people can't use them too, mm. i.e. lesbian and gay couples. Um, once it's out there, that will be a possibility. But if a lesbian couple... If, if you're permitting... Um, if society accepts gay marriage, then why shouldn't they have their own genetic children? I think, um, I have to ask my Christian colleagues here, why um, the Bible is a, speaks against homosexuality and probably one of the reasons is because there is an instruction to go forth and be fruitful. And man and man can't do that, and a woman and a woman can't do that yet. But what if they could? It's coming soon. Could be. What if they could? <laughs> You'd love it to... <laughs> Natalie. Julia Parker, Ashley, good morning. Uh, you, you run the Gay Family Web Fertility Centre. It would be wonderful for you, this, would it? It would. I mean, since we've, we've been running the business now for five years, and in that time we've helped nearly 700 couples um, to, to have children, and I'd say 85% of them would prefer the, the donor not to be involved at any point. So for this to happen, then the children, you, they wouldn't have that question of how they've been created. So that you biological can... connection is yeah. very important to you and it's very important to a lot of the people who come to you yeah I think that um, you know that this is what they're always concerned about is that what do they tell the children when they get to the age when they start asking you know where they came from how they were made and well, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too and when the issue was the discussion of whether gay and lesbian couples should be able to adopt children the importance of genetic relationship was then downplayed and it was said that all that matters is that you have a committed couple that, or, or even a committed single person and the relationship between the parent, the nurturing and so on was the all-important thing. You can't have it both ways. I happen to agree that actually genetic parenting is very, very important. But I think well, you should celebrate this, then, shouldn't you? Well, I think there are several issues that we haven't talked about that, as a bioethicist, I'm, I'm very concerned about. We were talking about equitable distribution earlier on. Most of these lesbian women will not be infertile. And I think a fundamental question we need to ask is, is it appropriate that resources in a national health service that is supposed to be treating yeah. the sick are being used on perfectly healthy people? 
even if you agree that the resources should be used in that way, mm -hmm. I totally disagree with you about the research from the unit in Cambridge, which has been shown to be deeply flawed by the only major study that's looked at a large sample of different parenting types in the States by Mark Regneris, published this year, that shows there is indeed deep concern for those whose primary interest is the welfare of the child, showing that children who are brought up by lesbian and gay couples do have, um, on 80 markers that they looked at, on 77 of them, these children did less well. Yeah. They were arrested more often, Enough, you want to they had more yeah. depression I mean, and so on. Very worrying. There was a big research uh, done in America last year, and it's been, it was ongoing, where they kept coming back to the children over the 20-year period, and the children they tested that had been in a lesbian relationship mm. were achieving better and were more... <laughs> that is that precisely not so. Well, well, uh, uh, some uh, people will have picked up on the fact that you, if I may, you, 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 you think it's very, the biological connection is very important, and yet you've, you've helped couples have children. And I know that you've, for some of those couples, you've sent them abroad where they can have yeah. anonymous sperm. Yeah. So that's an acknowledgement as well that the biological connection is not important because they will never know. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's simply then so that if when the child does ask, there's no answers, you know, and, wow. and they just... Wow, this well, there, well, there is an answer. I mean, you, the you, if thing, these technologies is... become de rigueur, and I think, actually, we're, we're decades away from You don't it. want the child uh, to have answers. But it, you well, could say that the parent of that child, your parent actually was a dead embryo. Pastor, That's going to be the truth. Pastor, it may be rather brutal, I heard the past, I heard the pastor mumbling. And <laughs> yeah, I'm very concerned Are about... You? Um, how I think science is playing God. I pastor in, in Croydon, which is the most populated borough in London out of the 33 boroughs. The biggest social problem we have in Croydon, especially with young men, is that they come from fatherless homes. I cannot believe we are discussing deliberately engineering families without a father. Wow. Families need fathers. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> and, you, know, you can talk about your research. Hold on a second. You can talk about your research. Let me talk to you about real life. You have no idea the cataclysmic pain mm. and suffering that families are going through, especially in the Afro-Caribbean communities, because there's no fathers. Mm. You have to be insane. Seriously, I have to be I mean, the Croydon the Croydon rights, the Croydon rights assert, predominantly were caused by young you people assert, that came from fatherless yeah. homes. I don't think you should assert that everyone who disagrees with you is ignorant of the real world. I think what we have to be very clear about is the, is the distinction that Dr. Passard made between the, the prospects of children from single parent homes where they've been abandoned by fathers who are never even with the mother or where there has been divorce or domestic violence and the separate situation where children are brought up in a loving environment by either solo parents or indeed lesbian couples, yeah, but... where the established view of the research, without quoting specific studies that I've not actually seen, I'd be interested to see that one, the established view is that they do very well, that they're certainly at no disadvantage. Uh, and, and, and there are long studies. Hang on, so, so the question... Let, let, let it finish. So, so I'll, I'll give you another opportunity. So the liberal way of dealing with this, I think, is that... People should be allowed to use technology, not on the National Health Service. No-one's argued that this would be a call on the Health Service. Um, should be allowed to use technology to be able to reproduce unless there is good evidence of a significant harm for the child or, indeed, the parents that would follow. There has not been shown to be the case. And in the case of someone who's sterile because of cancer, a mm. young man, if the, and wants their own biological child, if, later, research could derive sperm from other cells in their body safely, with no adverse consequence to the child for that man and his partner, then it, we should not ban it. That's all I'm it's saying. Very... No, I'm not talking about banning. I, please, Ms. Hans, don't, don't the that. Moment, I'm, I'm not talking about banning, and I totally agree with you that infertility brings a huge amount of pain. As a GP, I saw loads of it, and, and that deserves treatment. But what we're talking about here is people who are not infertile, but who want a child, and it's more to do with meeting their needs than bringing up or, or creating a child in an optimal environment. Na no, okay, Natalie wants to come straight back yeah. on that because that's the accusation just... of selfishness. Yeah. Natalie, and then I'll yeah. come to the audience. Natalie. And it's not just gay lesbians. Um... I mean, two, two, two brothers or sisters might decide to, you know, yeah. I, I want to create with you and take my skin well, cells think... and... Makes that would so. remain unlawful but, under any... genetic what, problem, but, but then, why clearly? should it remain unlawful uh, if that's Natalie, what I want? Natalie, that's, that's the can I just add that none of, yeah, none of our clients have ever had any uh, support from the NHS. They're all financially uh, stable. 
And you've got to remember that these children that they are creating and having to say they're in a loving relationship, uh, have got the stability of both parents. You know, those parents are what they know from the off. And that's, you know, that's all they need, a loving, stable home. And the, the, the children are progressing as they, as they normally would. All right, hand, hand, hands up. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to pick up on something the pastor said about mm. fatherless homes. Mm. Uh, I've worked a lot in this part of London, and I make films with some members of the Awkward Squad and some people who've fallen by the wayside into the margins. And I was speaking to a man who'd spent 14 of his 30 years in prison, uh, and he was giving me a, an interview on camera. I asked him where he thought he'd made a first wrong choice to end up where he was. And he said when he was about eight, he used to sit on his sofa and want to cuddle with his mother, and his father would not let him do that. And so it seems to me that human nature and love are the big issues underlying all this debate. Yeah, sure. And love, therefore, can still exist in a gay couple, uh, just as capitalism is not necessarily a bad thing, it's what you sure. do with it. I think what my sister I mean, I said, on the other side children. was speaking about was solo I, parenting. I, I, I don't know I any solo parent who slightly, thinks parenting um, is easy. Well, no, I've been a parent for 20 years. Parenting's not easy per se. Right, for yeah. two people. Rabbi, Rabbi Laura. Laura. Well, well, Rabbi well, Laura. A, I am conflicted on this because, for me, the pain for lesbian couples of not being involved biologically is enormous, and I really know that. And what's good for children is happy parents. Yes. And so if this is such a divisive issue, which I know it's such a deeply painful issue, that's a problem. I have a flag which is that they're two X chromosomes, so we're producing only girls. And my concern is about that as well. But it, it's, very, it's a very conflicting thing because the pain is ginormous. For just couples. confirm that would be the case, Arati, just before Rabbi Laura continues. You, um, there would be yes, eradication what, in these cases of the X chromosomes, so there would the be... Y. Uh, sorry, the, the Y chromosomes, so there would be girl children. Unless you use an artificial Y chromosome. I mean, things could be possible. Artificial so. Y chromosome? Yeah, you could create one. Oh. <laughs> it's a small... <laughs> that's yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, sorry Rabbi that's Laura. You were, uh, I interrupted you. Sorry. Carry on. So... So I think for us as a society, we need to look at what makes happy units of parenting, whether it's solo or whether it's two together. And this issue for lesbians is huge, but I'm also <laughs> fri I am frightened by the technology. Yeah. That's the, the level for me of, you know, when, when it goes into a zone that it is, so, it is so manufactured that I am scared of it. You should go to an intensive care unit which saves babies' lives and mm -hmm. then say you're frightened by that technology. Okay. Firstly, there's Baker no point. danger of, of, of sex being Baker eradicated being right. by this. Thank I think God, most people will still choose to have sex. It's only people who have a specific need uh, to, 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 to use this form of technology in order to have a happy family that they're biologically related to would want to use this. So I don't think and we need to raise the spectre um, of what, the end of sex. What you were saying um, uh, to Natalie is also true for heterosexual couples that when they're infertile, they tend to want to have their, and try everything to have their own genetic children before they look towards adoption. And I find what you say a little bit insulting because I am a single mother and I am not, not all, you can't say that all single mothers raise children and live in deprived. Are the, you a single mum by choice? No, I'm not. Right. But Would I have you prefer? A... Okay, that's a great question. Mm. Would you prefer the father of your child mm. to be parenting with you, yes or no? My, the father of my child has a fantastic relationship with my daughter, and in <laughs> fact, we, there are, you see, there are many ways of having a family and raising children, and it doesn't necessitate that that person has to be a man. You have grandmothers, you have okay. mothers, you brothers, you have um, lesbian couples. Are you happy being a single parent, or would you rather have dual parenting? You avoided answering Truly, the question. Truly, I'm Fine. very happy Who's being a single... Whose chat show is this? <laughs> 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 sorry, but she asked me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very sorry. happy being a single parent. In, um, in yeah, my that's mother's... That's not what I'm asking you, though. I'm very happy being a single parent. But that's would what you prefer... Me. Nikki, in, um, in other cultures, there are matrilineal cultures around the world where what you have is avuncular care... What about this or, idea um, of scarring the child that we, we've... Scarring how? Well, by, by, Charles, knowing, Charles by knowing that it's parents that's the is a dead embryo. That's yeah. a pretty scarring thing. Charles Foster. It's parents is a dead no embryo. I why feel that's why the are you case. saying it's parents are dead? I feel that's the case. I don't know if it's the case. So you start in all rational discourse with the precautionary principle. Um, unless we know what the risks are, we don't go ahead with it, unless no. there is a compelling reason to do no. otherwise. I would what, take... What, no, no, no. Well, I'm let Charles so, finish. Uh, can, uh, can I develop it? So what are the possible reasons for doing this technology? Well, you can imagine doomsday scenarios where there are no men left on Earth, 
um, <laughs> um, or <laughs> otherwise uh, where you, can, uh, you have to dispense with the need for um, a father. But uh, there is going to be, for the foreseeable future, lots of semen sloshing around the planet. So that doesn't seem to be, um, in the short to medium term, a, a real reason to go down this road. Um, then we're dealing with questions of infertility, which raise their own specific problems. Um, then we're dealing with two possible situations. Firstly, the, the lesbian couple, to which I will come. But uh, firstly, the sole woman who decides, I want a child by myself with no man or indeed other, other human being involved. The only motivation for that has to be selfish, has to be denial of, rela has to be denial of relationality. Um, it has to be a desire to keep that, ch that child away from all the contaminating it influences. It could be society. two women, so uh, another okay. human being could be involved. Right. And the, can you not understand the desire to be biologically related to the child? And th th Should you not applaud this? This is, this is preferable than sending off to America for some sperm off the internet. Isn't it morally the solar... preferable? Well, w when we come to, to lesbian couples, there has been, as Trevor's already indicated, a, a great deal of effective argument um, by those advocating... Um, gay adoption, to the, to the effect, it doesn't matter what your biological background is, the important thing is loving parents. That now seems to be um, skated over in the argument which is now sure. going on. Nobody, nobody pretends that um, anonymous semen donation is a psychologically easy way of conceiving children. Nobody pretends that it's ideal. Um, why then should one pretend that this is a better way of, of raising children than simple adoption, the, the means... Uh, for adoption which, is um, not simple. Story. There is no all such these, thing as simple adoption. All Let's the, clarify. All these okay, arguments Evan. that you just heard from Charles were used to argue against contraception. The precaution principle, let's not do unless there's a very good reason, against contraception, mm -hmm. against allowing even uh, adoption by single parents and gay couples. Mm -hmm. I take a different view. I say that when it comes to fundamental liberties, that is the right to reproduce, not relying on state handouts or the NHS paying for it, then the principle should be that unless there is clear evidence of harm, and there isn't in these cases, we should be permissive. We shouldn't ban people from reproducing, as you would wish to do, unless they can justify it in some way that suits I you. Just, I the think presumption that... should be the other way around. I think there's a principle Charles. which trumps the liberty of the individual to which, to which you refer, and that is the welfare of the child. I agree. We, I agree. we don't yeah. need to have evidence. Yeah. Of that, heart. No, that, that was exactly my yeah. point. Woody I mean, Allen what said what that he is... didn't understand how children survived even one mother, but in fact the studies show <laughs> that children with two mothers in loving lesbian households do very well. That's the point. Except so the, the evidence is good in that respect. Yeah, which, which you well, you can the, pick and choose. Doctor, doctor, it's the, the biggest the, study. One of the um, solo parents that was studied, there was a case of a Christian woman, and she decided to have um, IVF to have her baby because she didn't have a partner, and she was Christian and believed that it was wrong to have sex outside of marriage. So she chose to have a child that way, yeah. which I think is quite a funny way to have a virgin birth. And, we'll, <laughs> there, and there we'll, we'll leave it. Thank you all very much indeed for that. <laughs> If you've got something to say about that debate, log on to bbc.co.uk.